Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. My uh, name is Fuad Nahdi and I'm the executive uh, director of the Radical Middle Way. I'm here to share with you thoughts about uh, performing the pilgrimage, the annual pilgrimage or the Hajj. Alhamdulillah, uh, I'm privileged to be one of those people who will be performing the Hajj this year. When you look at it, the very fact that I am going for Hajj is itself beginning right from the beginning a miracle. At the most um, liberal estimation, there will be, um, well, officially three million, other people say up to five million perhaps. I think that's a bit too much. But even if it is five million, the only five million people attending the Hajj out of a total Muslim population of nearly 1.3 billion. So to be in uh, Arafah, which is where it is to be with the Hajjis or the heart of the Hajjis, is a very uh, unique and privileged uh, position. Sometimes I've been in the past for Hajj. I always ask myself, you know, why me? And the answer is, you're not there all the because you are the healthiest person in the world, or because you're the wealthiest person in the world, or the most spiritual, or the most God-fearing, or, you know, any other kind of reason. The only reason I can think about, honestly, when you look around and meet the kind of diverse people, and uh, people from different, all kinds of different backgrounds, is that you have been invited to the house of... Uh, the Lord by Allah himself, that you are a chosen guest. You are there because he wants you to be there. I can't explain any other reason uh, to be there. And this is, uh, I've done scores of Umrahs, and this will be, I think, my eighth uh, Hajj. Yet I feel as nervous and as excited and as expecting about going there as uh, perhaps uh, my first one. I did my first one when I was a young man, in my late teens. Uh, right from very young, it has always been a deep desire uh, myself growing up that I needed to do the Hajj. First, because it was first. Second, I couldn't think of a more adventurous uh, travel. You know, to go and actually visit the places uh, you grew up hearing about, uh, Makkah, the Prophet's house, Allah Wasallam, see the Kaaba itself, you know the Sahabas, the, you know Jabal Noor, it's amazing. So when I went all those years ago, uh, over 30 years uh, plus more, it was a simple journey. I traveled by boat to the port in Jeddah, not the airport, but the port, and it was nice hard but i was young i could take it walking taking lifts going living in tents a uh, very haphazard life i remember fasting most of the time and feasting together with other people it's the first time that i met muslims from different parts of the world first time i met muslims from central asia from afghanistan from malaysia from um, west africa and even in, from bosnia i think uh, i also met a spanish muslim at the time so Hajj in that way is an in process of uh, enrichment, it's a process of education. This is why historically Hajj has been very important. One who performs the Hajj makes a journey, not only a spiritual journey, but a physical journey. And during that physical journey is a learning experience, picking up uh, new information, new knowledge, new contacts. Uh, and that is why the honorific title after you come back from Hajj somebody to be called Al-Hajj was a very big title because it showed a worldly experience. It showed that you had traveled the world, meet a lot of people and embrace them in a mutual spirit of uh, Islamic uh, brotherhood. Of course, today, Hajj is a totally different uh, kind of thing. It's a matter of a couple of hours, literally, uh, go on the board of the train, uh, on the plane, and. Um, Instant you're in Jeddah, you're whisked away by fast moving uh, cars, and uh, instead of Hajj taking months or even years to perform, nowadays it can be done literally in terms of days. 
one can perform it in a week. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not saying whether the old Hajj is better than the new one, but there is a flavor. There is something I think that is lost, and there's something that is gained. In our first world, we want everything to be turned out first. Um, uh, that today, most of the interesting things in uh, uh, Makkah, from food to housing to facilities, they are of course a lot better and lot things, but are they in any way reflective of the spiritual, you know, Makkah or the, of the place? When I went, we lived, first time, we lived in very simple tents where things like toilets were very difficult to go by. But nowadays, showers are there, you know, people live in, you know, it's Makkah and Medina both are surrounded by, you know, exclusive five-star hotel. I mean, if one is blindfolded and taken there, and then the blindfold taken off, and ask where you are, and you didn't know, you could think you were anywhere in one of the big major cities, Chicago, or New York, or London, or uh, Riyadh. Hajj is also increasingly becoming more accessible to people because many people can afford it because the Muslim world is getting richer because there are more people. So it's, but it's also still not cheap. From what I understand, the to go from Hajj for here in Britain, the average now is about three and a half thousand pounds to four thousand pounds, something like that. It is a lot of money. Uh, perhaps people who live here can work and save that money. But can you just imagine somebody who lives in a poor Muslim countries? When I first went, it wasn't. I mean, it was still expensive. But I've met people there for whom Hajj was the total saving of their lives, and the lives perhaps of the second generation. It was really a journey of a lifetime to go there. I know a lot of people here in the West are very disappointed because when they go for Hajj, what they want to see is a sort of um, preserved city, the way it was during the Prophet's time, a uh, kind of nostalgic uh, adventure, you know, where they can visit it, uh, like, basically like a museum which has remained stagnant. There is a point there for some of preservations and things, but I don't know how that is easy or attainable compared to the fact that the organizers for the Hajj have to deal with increasing numbers of people coming for Hajj every year. And people who make demands that they want to have Hajj al Baytaman Istata Ali Sabina. Hajj is for those people who can afford it and people uh, who are there, who own the land and the thing, build properties, very expensive uh, hotels and things, and expect uh, to make profit like other people. The arguments are complex, but the point is there is no right or wrong, it's just we have to go on. There could be more here, we talk about the middle way, about a way of finding out a balance of preserving what is essential to preserve and then to expand in areas. I've not been for about four years to Mecca. So this is the first time. I'm a bit jittery because recently there have been a lot in the media about the new developments, uh, which I personally find ugly and stuff, but I also have to accept the fact that perhaps some of them are necessary. I'm going now more like a half-disabled person, and I'm more sensitive to that than when I was young. But it's difficult when you get strong, very bulky, heavy uh, people pushing and you're weak and you've got some kind of elements and you get toppled over, or women or children. Uh, so there is a disciplining. But then at the end of the day, the whole purpose about Hajj is to give us an indication about uh, the day of reckoning, the day of judgment. And on that day we are told that everybody will be for themselves. It will be like nafsi nafsi and all for myself. And I don't think when the sun is brought, like they said, over our heads and the heat of you know, in Jahannam is burning. I don't think that we're going to have much luxury of looking for, you know, the best shower or the perfume you used or the uh, 17 cores meal in the five star hotel you were staying. Uh, all in all, is, it's a very exciting. I travel a lot, but to be honest, there is no more, there's no better place, no better um, uh, destination than going to the Kaaba because. It's got everything. You know, going to the Kaaba, I know, you'll meet hundreds of people who you'd never meet in London in your life from all kinds. It's so unpredictable. 
Do you understand? If you went to a resort, holiday resort somewhere, you'll know there'll be a certain class of people speaking certain or coming from different. Here, it's so unpredictable. It's anybody could come there. And as a believer, I don't think everybody there who's coming is a human being. They are, oh, some believe could be angels joining you on the street who look, need a smile from you, or you need a, a you know, uh, to be greeted or to walk by you. So I'm excited. I'm looking forward to going to Kaaba. And um, the tradition is to repeat the Talbiya, which is La Beka Allahumma La Beka. La Beka La Sharika Laka La Beka. In Alhamdu Wa Ni'mat Laka Wa Al-Mulk. This is to accept, to say to Allah, here I come. And here I come uh, and prepare yourself psychologically to be you know, to enter the house of uh, the Lord.